Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be going back to the 1950s, an era where world championships and Olympic Games weren't really a thing. So today we're going to be looking back at a judo competition in the Kodokan and we're going to see it had a completely different spirit. Now, of course, what we see today has evolved tremendously. You're going to see gripping wise mainly and of course the athletes are getting stronger and from all over the world you're going to be fighting so many styles and it's understandable that you're going to work on every little advantage such as physical little gripping uh, tactics uh, etc and these are important but you're going to see in this one that it is something about the principles of judo but before we do that please feel free to check out my book the translation of the origins and history of judo by Ryohei Uchida of 1903 available in French, English and modern Japanese bilingual link in the description below. So we're going to see something that is more geared towards the preservation of energy and more towards the principles of judo rather than just sheer domination and what we see today. Again, I'm not saying what's happening now. It's wrong or this was better it's just showing you the sports evolution of things now the competition begins it is right versus left you're gonna see some type of uh, fighting for the sleeve which is very normal a lot of people think they just posed their hands on each other and fought of course it's not paralympics but you're gonna see uh, a little less subtle gripping so to speak and more about moving around the mat and really waiting for that right moment whether they finished a failed attack or they're moving in the direction that you want them to move or simply they become static in a way that you can enter and throw them for ippon all about really seizing uh, the moment so you're seeing them moving all around and Notice who's the referee, it is Kyuzo Mifune, looking absolutely like a gangster with the suit. So um, here you see uh, nothing too overwhelming happening and uh, it is simply all about movement and conservation of energy and really waiting for that right moment. Now, this is what I mean by grip fighting for the sleeve because it is dangerous. The moment he catches and really he's in a better posture, he's gonna have the better attack and eventually the Ippon. So this is why people say uh, two-handed judo is somewhat dead. Here you see Maruyama, Vieru attacked. He capitalizes on uh, having an access to the sleeve and immediately goes for a massive Uchimata. Here, another one where he's, his opponent is being very defensive, not giving too much the sleeve. And then the moment he grips, flares his elbow upwards, goes in and throws so uh, you're gonna see this in the past of course it's it's not a completely different world now but you see it's a far more subtle and more about movement and less about strong and somewhat static judo like a few have uh, today now let's take a look at big guys and you're gonna see even for very big guys you're gonna see a little bit more movement and capitalizing and on the movement rather than the gripping so this is what i'm trying to say is conservation of energy is getting someone much bigger to move in order to do basically two-thirds of the job for you and all you have to do is get in on the right time and throw and here you see them um, defending with the hips not too much bending over and really moving and having a proper posture and then trying to force their way in of course these are big guys you're gonna see some type of strength being applied which is very natural but far more conservative energy wise now here look at this punching up of the lapel goes in tries to throw with the hips as in tsuri goshi or sorry tsuri komi goshi and uh now i want to say this of course the japanese will teach you a lot about punching up the lapel hand or the tsurite and from there it's gonna destabilize them and then it's up to you to go in and then lift them upwards um, because 
lifting up, going in and lifting upwards is far easier. Try your throws like uh, Shohei Ono, for example, or just pulling into you and then go in and punch up the lapel. You're going to see punching up the lapel and going in like this with the hips or the back or the leg, whatever your throw may be. You're going to see that it is much easier to punch up and then go in and lift upwards and throw forward. Now, today, a far more advanced variation you're going to see is this flaring the elbow upward. This is from the channel Fluid Judo Japan. Here you see it's a complete pull towards you and then you turn away and throw. Very little entering on your behalf is needed. Here he's showing how to break the grip, but mind the elbow. Here you see very little entering is needed. It's just a big pull and then a swift pull and the legs go slightly inwards, not too much. Now. If we were to compare to today, look at the flaring of the elbow and that big, massive pull. For example, Shohei Ono comes to mind. You're going to see this is far more advanced, of course, but at the same time, it requires slightly a bit more uh, force. Not everyone can do this, and uh, I'm sure many of you have tried it, and it's not as easy as it looks just pulling someone into you and lifting them. Uh, ono Shohei is known for being strong now i want to switch to something a little bit more different and you can see this even today in japan where you have to fight let's say for a black belt to get promoted on the same day and what you do is you have to beat opponent after opponent and the, they leave you don't get to a break they another one immediately comes into the mat so you have to understand how much you have to be conservative in terms of cardio movement and energy so here you see he's waiting on him he there's one that's constantly being on the attack and someone and the other one is constantly on the move and here blocking with the hips natural posture and here you see them constantly moving and this is how you preserve yourself body mind and of course technique and here he made him move where to the direction where he wants and then immediately turns and blocks for a massive o soto guruma you see we see a lot of people drill this way but you can actually do this in sparring if you have everything wind down completely or in control including your mind because once your mind is calm you can do these far more calmly rather than explode here you see the o soto guruma from the 1914 book by uh, isogai so here he wins, he stays on the mat, another opponent comes. That's how my competition was. I had to beat three. So another one comes in, he immediately goes on the attack. The other one is being a bit conservative. Notice there's no shido for passivity or whatever. This is just judo for judo's sake and really about uh, seiryoku zenyu, preserving energy, having a natural stance and waiting for the right moment to throw with as much ease and effortlessly possible so um, the other one is going around moving trying to throw and here he capitalizes on a failed attack with the forward momentum to just pull him in and then again punches up with the lapel in order to throw because he was already in him like very close to him all he had to do is just punch up with the lapel turn and throw and as you can see, um, you can evolve your judo either way. A lot of you will look at this and will think, you know, this is how I usually practice. Obviously, that's not how I, I, I don't train like I compete. While you have very young ones, they train like they're in the competition and it's incredibly useless, I find it. There's very little room for learning when you're really fighting violently and gripping violently as if you're in, you're in competition without leaving any room for learning. And I find that very counterintuitive and uh, we should be a little bit more mindful and look up these competitions of the past and see how the true nature of judo was and how they actually wanted them to be. So if you are seeing Mifune, uh, refereeing you, you know that it is proper judo that you are seeing in front of you movement natural stance it's not about beating up each other and then how many let, let me ask you a question how many times have you fought a young one especially those 
18 to 22 year olds black belts they're fighting hard exerting all this energy they're trying to give you a hard time but then towards the end with their violent gripping deep down the back or around the belt and then they go for an attack finally and it's very underwhelming because that's how they practice all the time they leave very little room for drilling proper uchikomi nagekomi moving around and doing kakari geiko and yaku soku geiko as well and then their technique will suffer they become very strong they become with very good cardio and movement and gripping but the finishing or the finissage is barely there and that's very unfortunate uh, in my opinion it, it will waste years of your judo evolution in my opinion so learn from the old ones and that's why i want old access to 1960s and 70s olympic judo because i'm sure we have a lot to learn from and it will allow us to evolve um, the art slash sport so if you have anything to add let me know down below don't forget to check out the book this was shady and thank you for listening